Go. So here is a close-up of my kiln. The uh, pit on here. Uh, I've got it currently set for uh, 43, 43 degrees Celsius, 38, and that's the working temperature. And this is the uh, set temperature. And up here, showing the inside temperature, 113 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 45 degrees Celsius. So these, you can tell the difference. Uh, minimum, maximum. Max, we were at 65% uh, humidity. And then the in and out is exactly opposite because this, this is normally, this hygrometer is used for humidity and temperature for outside. And I'm using it inside the uh, cabinet. So with that, excuse me, just had a banana. Woohoo, banana! Uh, out, so I'm at 26% in there. And 112. So my goal temperature was uh, uh, 100 degrees plus or minus a little bit uh, Fahrenheit. And to get the uh, humidity down to 35% or less and holding. So with that, it seemed like it took forever. I'll uh, look in the calendar to see. I actually made it uh, yesterday and it held. That was the biggest thing. It hadn't uh, hadn't been holding. And this is kind of cool. It's got a magnetic backing. I got a bunch of junk up top here. But I was putting that on the other side um, so I could uh, then monitor it from the inside of the house. I'm in my three seasons room. And I just got some uh, blue tape on here. And here is my wiring job. Uh, um, I was trying to decide whether I wanted to close this in uh, permanently, but uh, looks funny now uh, being dark since it had been uh, nice and bright with a light bulb, but I'll show you that. Uh, this piece of cherry uh, did go ahead and uh, have obviously a lot of stress. It's got quite the major crack. But uh, the rest of these um, have come down substantially. I was checking them, and like this one is 10. Uh, let's see if I can do it one handed. Got a moisture meter. Poke it in. And I can't get it one handed. Come on. And it turned off. That one is not popping for me. But I was getting down to 7-8%, which is my uh, target goal. And uh, so on here, and then we'll put up the bottom. I don't have anything in the drawer on there, or in the door rather. But the uh, key to the system is in the very bottom, I have a, a light bulb socket and it still has a uh, pull cord chain. I left that in there because when I did start it with a electric light bulb, I was able to uh, uh, turn off the power on there and switch the light bulb out without having to power down the whole unit. I did put a cage underneath so that uh, I don't get uh, ambitious with the wood and uh, bust the light. The uh, first light bulb only lasted um, two or three days and then I don't know if I lost it because of uh, uh, water dripping down or not but I've replaced it with this uh, reptile he uh, heating element and uh, supposed to last for just about forever but uh, here I've got the uh, wood supply it is almost all of it is cherry and the cool thing about it is you can actually see the shrinkage in on the wood and the bark is nice and loose on there so it definitely did its job and out of all the pieces, there was a little bit that, uh, actually a lot of it had um, oh, chipping and voids in there, things like that. And it looks like I only had the one piece that had some serious uh, stress, stress on it. And this one actually is a different piece of wood. Let's see if I can see in there. That one, I'm not sure what that one was. That's got some spalting in there. But uh, recycled refrigerator, it's uh, 10 cubic feet. I went ahead and took the glass shelves out and uh, had some oh, uh, wire shelving. I bought some more and then I cut it so it would fit into the original grooves. I can take these out and I took a knife and cut out the uh, cabinet. Uh, let's see if I can get a light in here. There we go. There you go. And when I had the green light underneath on there, it actually looked pretty cool. But uh, so I connected the uh, two units, the uh, fridge and the freezer section, 
and uh, in order to seal it off I bought some matching uh, white duct tape so it looks fairly decent sealed up and the all the wiring connections you can just see a little bit at the very back maybe this log uh, there's a drain tube that goes naturally in. Let me move him all the way. And I went ahead and repurposed that so the wires fit down on the back. And uh, it almost looks like a professional unit, if I do say so myself, except for this wire here that I'm putting an actual harness in. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so far, just this part of it works. And let me put the piece of wood back up. And it's fitting nicely. And with the uh, hygrometer uh, gauge, it, this particular model came with. Uh, let's see if I can reach it. A temperature probe and also the the uh, humidity uh, gauge. So this one here with the open is for humidity, and the other one looks like a little jack. That one's temperature. They got suction cups and they were sucked on there for a while, but eventually it uh, came loose. The other gauge and battery starting to die out. But the top one that's metal, that one is for the PID. So it was super easy to run on there. And uh, other than that, I bought the uh, PID that has a, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, solid state relay and uh, I'll show a picture of that as well. Okay, so I just unloaded the kiln and uh, here is the aftermath. <coughs> I got kind of a mess in here. And I did save the uh, fan that would go into the top just in case I decide to put it back in. Other than that, all the electronics are working really good. And uh, the pit on there, I was thinking about uh, putting a sticker around it just to dress it up a little bit, but not too shabby. And here I have a manual one. It's raining out right now, so we're pushing almost 70 on the humidity and 50 degrees out here in the tiki room. Crawling underneath, I have a surge protector, wires going up in the tube. And then electrical box, I will put a cover on there. And then there is the uh, uh, solid state uh, relay. And uh, there's a little LED uh, that will pop on uh, uh, when uh, power's on. But uh, super happy and things are working great. And everybody should own a kiln.